As we've popped our heads into E46 M3s, Ferrari F430s, and even Hondas, I've begun to notice a very weird pattern. There's technology that feels like a baby step forward and some that feels like it's from the future. And I didn't really understand it until I spent some time doing some research, okay? Now let's be clear, that like future problem, it's not coming from aliens from the three body problem. That was just a very weird show. It's coming from a sport that seems to be growing in size every single year that you and I know as Formula One. So how and why could such advanced technology from a car that pretty much just runs around in circles be in a Honda Civic? Well, that's exactly what I wanted to figure out with you, but I needed to find a friend, somebody that could help me. If only there was a sponsor who could help with that, a company that knew these cars inside and out, that as long as you click the link below, you would help me understand this chunky bit of knowledge and this vein in my neck could go away. Click the link below to learn about F124. It helped me out a lot. Plus, it's a bang on game. It's actually super freaking fun, and I didn't know that it had as much as it did until I started playing it. Now, if you want to stay planted on a racetrack, you need good tires and better aero. Over the years, carbon fiber front lips have been adapted to use something called Jabra. I used an accent there. I don't even know how to say it really. It's Jabra, high density wood laminate, manufactured using high pressure and temps to make just essentially really strong wood. That wooden plank you saw underneath the car was called a skid block and is typically made of Jabra. Now, it looks like wood, it is wood, but it's not really wood. But this is kind of a weird thing because over time, this material made its way on GT3 cars that you can buy from dealerships like the GT3 Huracan and even the M4 CSL. But you and I aren't installing oak logs on our car, so where did the development come from? Well, the wings and that angry cheese grater on the front of Formula One cars are probably the biggest reason. In Formula One, over 1,600 pounds of downforce are pushing on those two pieces on the front of the car and the back of the car when the cars are only going 100 miles an hour. When they reach their top speed, it will carry four times its weight in downforce. And for some reason, Ferrari said at some point or another, we could just put that on our road cars because that would be pretty cool. Engineers like Rory Byrne and Aldo Costa were working to develop an active aero system for Formula One and in that time had also been developing the Ferrari La Ferrari, the name that translates to Ferrari the Ferrari. And the result was one of the best made street cars ever designed, and it came directly from Formula One. But getting the aerodynamics right is very hard. And if you think that's hard, think about this plug, because putting that into a game is even harder. It's finally here. Formula One in 2024. The wait is over in Bahrain, and we are just hearing that the starting grid is on the look for a new driver. Who will it be? And I know, it's a plug, but it's a cool plug, and it's a video game that seems pretty damn sick. I couldn't stop playing it. Don't tell my wife. Now you see, in Formula One, actually testing their cars in a wind tunnel or CFD simulations are limited depending on how good you do, and your allocation is adjusted every six months. This was rad to learn. For instance, Red Bull, who's taken the grid by storm, may only have 202 runs available in a wind tunnel in terms of testing and 1,260 in a CFD analysis, whereas Williams, poor Williams, gets 300 168 runs and 2300 runs in their CFD analysis. This gives them more time to make a better car. But what about power? EVs, they get more popular and people who mod their cars may think that the technology for that is getting pushed by a road company and that may be furthest from the truth. It's again, coming from Formula One, the amount of money that is in this sport and what people do with it is insane. There's so much tech that comes from Formula One right now that goes onto street cars. It blew this forehead's mind. So let's talk about KERS, not the rash that you'd get on your thigh for something. KERS actually stands for Kinetic Energy Recovery System. This is another Formula One trick that turns a car's braking energy into electrical energy that's captured by a generator that's connected to a drivetrain. Now, that energy is stored and at the push of a button can be released 
released to provide a little extra boost in power, okay? These companies, they got a button, boost. It's cool, it's rad, it makes for really fun overtakes in Formula One. Now, Kurs also exists in road cars now because of Formula One, and by definition, that's an electric hybrid technology, and it's getting more affordable every single day. Now, the technology is what's been introduced into street cars like the LC500H, the Acura NSX, and even, dare I say, the old classic BMW i8. It's been slowly introduced to more normalized cars as well. Companies like Mazda even tested this with their Skyactiv technology and a variation of it. Now, these small and insanely difficult details that nerds and lap coats develop are nearly impossible to replicate, unless you know what you're doing. Guess what, baby? It's another plug for F124. Get it, got it, click it, you make me happy. You're able to adjust, refine, and change how that energy is used in-game on the track, along with adjusting your ERS modes mid-session, which makes the racing experience even crazier and more like the real thing. While we may not all have a P1 sitting in our garage to take to Las Vegas, you can hop into F124 in your favorite car and enjoy the most advanced type of driving behavior ever before seen in a game, which includes curves. You don't even have to buy BMW i8 for this. Again, is that a plug? Absolutely, it is. Guys, listen, that's what I'm doing here. I need you to check it out. It'd be really cool. Now, the thing with race cars is that they're often just seen as exciting folks who love adrenaline, but it's really so much more. The technology, the data, the sheer scale of people who work to develop this like jet-like car is nearly impossible to wrap my head around, which is why I love exploring the sport from like a historical perspective. We spent a lot of time over the past couple of months with me talking stories and short form videos because I enjoy it. Well, it's because I'm a nerd, but it's also because I love that people have dedicated their lives to this sport. And I can't be any more clear in what F124 is as well. It's a bang on game that can be as easy or as technological advanced as you want it to be. And it gives you the chance to unleash your champion as a racing enthusiast. So go pick up your copy or download it with the link above or below. I don't really sure where my head is right now. And even if that's not a game that interests you, go take a peek at their page because the detail and nerdiness that they bring to the, like, the community, I think is pretty cool to learn from. I'm Alex Martini. Let me know what questions you have below. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you on the next one.